being a participant today in this ceremony has a very special meaning to my family. As my father, M. Keith Fearing, was the chairman of the 1964 Dedication Committee. So for whoever put me up here, uh, uh, it is absolutely touching and moving to me and my family, so thank you. Today we're here to celebrate the new bridge over Oregon Inlet that has been named the Mark Bass Knight Bridge. And we're also saluting the history of the Hubert Bonner Bridge. We have many government officials here today and elected officials from various towns, cities, and counties throughout our state. I think the whole room is elected officials and public servants. But I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you are a, a current elected official or if you are a past elected official, could you please stand so we could recognize you? Now, for the special recognition, <coughs> with the family of Senator Bass Knight and Sandy Bass Knight, please stand so we can recognize you. I'd like to also take this time to recognize a few other people that have been involved in this project, and there have been many over the years. Uh, governor Cooper, you're the sixth governor involved in this project today, <laughs> and we wholeheartedly welcome you here today in this event. <laughs> Former Pat McCroy, Secretary Tatum. Former Secretary Nick Tennyson is who is with us today, limping all the way from Durham. Uh, former uh, member, board member Stan White, are you in the crowd? Stan, he was at the reception. Uh, Gus Tullis, he's here, a present board member. Uh, Clark Jenkins, if Clark's in the crowd. Uh, Representative John Tolbert. Mr. Transportation, thank you so much, John, for your support. John Sutherland, I don't know if John's in the group or not, but he's our federal highway partner who was instrumental in the funding. We, there's a federal element in this bridge project. Shelly Blake. Shelly, please stand. Shelly was the board attorney. She kept all the cats on the hot tin roof. She kept them herded. She negotiated this with the Southern Environmental Law Center and the Defenders of Wildlife, our friends in the environmental community. Without her leadership, this bridge would not have been possible. So Shelly, from all of us, thank you. PCL contractors, the DOT team, Cape Hatter Selector. And would any other person or group that played a role in the building or planning of the Mark Bass Knight Bridge please stand now so we can recognize you. Please come on, PCO, come on. When it was 95 degrees, they were on the bridge. When it was 25 degrees and blowing 30 mile an hour, they were on the bridge. So for that crew, we thank you for your dedication and hard work on this project. And thanks to the men and women who serve the Coast Guard Station at Oregon Inlet. Your service to our country and Dare County is greatly appreciated. And I mean that personally because you picked me out of the water one time when I was capsized. <laughs> uh, we also have some other members from the U.S. Coast Guard here with us today. Thank you for your support that you have given this project and our state. Now it gives me great pleasure to ask Pastor Matt Seals, my pastor 
Alan's pastor to come forward and give us a uh, uh, invocation. Let us pray. Lord of all creation of water, earth, and sky, we gather today in one of the most beautiful places in creation. And we pause for celebration and recognition of a faithful servant to this community. Lord, in the midst of that, we pause also and remember two whose lives were lost in this land of beauty yesterday. We pray for those families. We pray for comfort and peace in this devastating time in their lives and their family. We pray that you, the Good Shepherd, will bring this family through this valley and give them peace and comfort. Father God, we gather today in the midst of a day full of liquid sunshine to celebrate and give thanks for the beauty of dreams, vision, and wisdom of many throughout the course of time. We give thanks for many who work tirelessly on this project, from the dreaming to completion. We give thanks for the many whose names were lifted during this process and for each of their contributions to this community. And we gather to celebrate, recognize, and give thanks to Senator Mark Bassnight for the work he has done and his continuous work on behalf of this great community. Be present during this time, O oh God, as we come to this time of dedication and honoring Senator Bassnight for his work and dedication to this community. Continue to bless each of us, especially the leaders of this community and this great state, that we might continue to listen for your voice as you call us to love and serve in the same way that you called Mark last night to love and serve. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Apparently your wife picked the tie out. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me the microphone, and I'm going to take the privilege a little bit. I'm going to change the program. Before I did it, though, I did consult with uh, Alan. Fish? Uh -huh. <laughs> Vicki Bastite, do you have something that you'd like to read to us? I do, along with my sister. Vic this is Vicki and Caroline, Mark's daughters. Started rocking a bit when we came up. <laughs> I have something here in my father's handwriting. We so wish he could be here today because this is a great honor for him, our family, his grandchildren who are here today, and in his words, you gather here today to honor me, but this naming belongs to many. Early on, there was perception that we on the Outer Banks didn't belong in Raleigh or to anyone. A change slowly occurred when the many gathered to start building bridges. With our brethren in Raleigh, with our convincing and at times fussy belief that we were successful. Bridges bring people together and never divide. So to all people in the great state of North Carolina who helped make our bridge a new must see in America, with much grateful love, I thank you, Mark. Come up here now. Thank you again. It's hard to follow the man's own words, but uh, today we are gathered not only to celebrate and dedicate a bridge, but also to bear witness to the completion of a project which took nearly three decades to become a reality. The push and sometimes flat out fight to build this bridge has spanned the careers of many professionals who have played vital roles in bringing us together today. Each person which played a role in bringing this bridge from a project from merely a thought to an engineered drawing to bringing it to life and constructing a beautiful structure we have today should feel proud and know we as a community are incredibly thankful. I would be remiss if I did not mention 
Warren Judge for his years of dedication and raising awareness to have this bridge built. Ms. Tess, thank you for sharing Mr. Warren with us. I would also like to thank the hard work and dedication of staff at NCDOT, and PCL, specifically Jerry Jennings and Pablo Hernandez. Without the leadership and oversight the two of you provided for this project, we certainly would not have vehicles on the structure today. <laughs> Secretary Trogdon, I want to personally thank you for your dedication to this project and for your understanding that this structure is more than just a bridge to our community. Your connection to and your journey with this bridge goes back decades. And I know without your leadership, this bridge would still be a drawing on someone's desk. Governor Cooper, I'm delighted to have you here with us today on this great day for Dare County and the state of North Carolina. Thank you for your continued effort to revitalize the small towns in our state. Your hometown strong initiative is evidence of your vision to see what our small towns can be and the dedication you have to see the vision come to fruition. It has been said many times that this bridge stands as a lifeline for the thousands of residents on Hatteras Island. And this bridge connects the dots to allow hundreds of thousands of visitors to vacation on our beautiful beaches and visit our national seashore each year. This bridge also allows safe passage for our commercial and sport fishing fleets to navigate in and out of the inlet to provide for their families. This bridge is without question a lifeline, but to our community it means and it is far more. It is truly an honor for me to stand up before you today for this dedication. When I was a young boy growing up in Manio, I would walk to the sound with my fishing pole. And Mark would pull his car up next to me and ask how the fishing was. To me, he was just a neighbor. As I got older, my father began to explain to me all the good things Mark had done for our community and was still doing. Mark then became a legend. In high school, I began to work with Mark at the restaurant. In those years, he became a mentor. Years later, I was blessed to call his daughter Caroline my wife, and he became my family. Today, you'll hear many things Mark has done for the state of North Carolina, eastern North Carolina, and Dare County. But although Mark has assumed a powerful role and accomplished many great feats, his greatest accomplishment was for many of us in small towns in eastern North Carolina. He is and always will be a neighbor, a legend, a mentor, and family. And for this reason, I'm honored to call the bridge the Mark Bass Night Bridge. My turn now. <laughs> uh, this is what should be said. But even though Bobby out and told me I had 30 minutes, I don't know I can say it all in, in that length of time. So I'm going to give you a, a revised vision. I think today we're here to celebrate Mark Bass Night. We're also here to celebrate the service of the Bonner Bridge too. So let's talk about that a little bit. I'm going to give you all a little bit of history. The Honorable Luther Hodges was here on May 2nd, 1964. That's when the bridge was dedicated. Merle Evans was the chairman of the State Highway Commission. Uh, the Honorable Terry Sanford was the governor. Gillum Wood was the Division I Highway Commissioner. Ephraim Williams was the president of the Southern Albemarle Association. And my dad, Keith Fearing, was the chairman of the dedication committee. On May 2nd, 1964, Dare County had a population of 6,400 people. We have now over 36,000. Real property values were just over $24 million. 
They're now $12.2 billion. 158 bypass had two lanes. NC12 going north stopped at Duck. Many of those roads north of there were sand. The Alligator River Bridge had just opened. Virginia Dare Bridge didn't even exist. And Senator Mark Bassnight was 16 years old. Local names that were in the 64 dedication were Davis, Briggs, Edwards, Fearing, Craddock, Young, Perry, Midget, Wood, Herbert, Gray, Twyford, Beals, Mann, Meekins, Anderson, Austin, Brown, Jeanette, Scarborough, Odin, Williams, Wise, Newman, Heyman, Taylor, White, Daniels, McGinnis, Harvey, Farrah, and Etheridge, just to name a few. Who was Herbert Covington Bonner? He was a member of the 1st District U.S. Congress. He held office from November the 5th, 1940, until his death on November the 7th, 1965, which was just a little over a year after the dedication of the bridge in his honor. Today, there are a few local boys, not boys anymore, uh, that actually work on that bridge. Hughes, sitting with the family. Sandy's brother. I think he was the crew leader of Jimmy Dudd and Charlie Clark and my good friend Jeffrey Midget, who's 77 years old today. He said, Malcolm, you won't let me off to come down here. <laughs> 41 hurricanes hit the coast of NC during the bridge of service. The center span was taken out by a barge in 1990. The bridge was closed in December 2013 because of scouring around the pilots. Today and into the future, the Herbert C. Bonner Bridge will continue its service as a pedestrian bridge for the general public for years to come. I know what time it is. But just think of me as that Baptist pre-trip revival. <laughs> I've got a message, and I just and I got the microphone, <laughs> and I got to get it out. Let's talk about Mark a little bit in a different way. His grandparents were Annie Cahoon and Mancliff H. Bastine, Monsey Lee Daniels, and Belva Midget. His wife was Caroline. Carolyn Sandy Tillett Bassnard, whose parents were Leslie Rogers and Hughes Tillett. Sandy's grandparents were Caroline Scarborough and Ned Rogers, Appy Heyman and Dewey Tillett. Mark and Sandy were married on March 23, 1968, and they were married until June 10, 2007, when she entered her eternal life. Their children are Vicky, Caroline. Their grandchildren are sitting up front. They are Braden and Victoria, Crew, Mark Crew, and Kennedy Sanford. So the names Scarborough and Rogers and Heyman and Tillett, Cahoon and Daniels, Midget and Bass Knight are being mentioned again today as they were in 1964. A little bit market about market and transportation. I don't know many of the people outside his family would know this. His interest in transportation started when he was eight years old. Can you imagine that? In Mania, on the dirt streets, he had a goat. He hooked a card up to that goat, and that goat's name was Alabama. Navigating the streets of Manio with that goat and that cart, he realized right then and there there needed to be something done about the roads and bridges and ferries in northeastern North Carolina. Mark's public service started in 1974 when he was the chairman of the Dare County Tourist Bureau. In 1977, he was seated on the North Carolina 
Department of Transportation until 1983. In 84, he was elected to the NC Senate and served there until 2011. He also served from 1993 to 2010 as its Senate Pro Tem. Some of the transportation projects, and these are just a few, that Senator Bass Knight had great influence. NC 158, NC 168 in Currituck County, the second Currituck Bridge, the Virginia Dare Bridge, the replacement bridge as we're celebrating today over Oregon Inlet, the Washington Bomb Replacement Bridge. Senator Mark Bass Knight was responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars in transportation projects invested in northeastern North Carolina. Transportation is one of the main infrastructure investments, as we know, that grow an economy. Today, Dare County's economy and tourism is over $1.2 billion. This would not be possible without roads and bridges and ferries systems in our county, which Senator Bastard advocated. I'll tell you about the resolutions. Who supported this? I want to thank the Board of Commissioners, Bob, and your team for being the first ones. The town of Manioso supported it, the town of Nags Head, the town of Kill Double Hills, the town of Kitty Hall, the Southern Albemarle Association, which include Dare, Beaufort, Hyde, Terrell, Martin, and Washington counties, the NC Board of Transportation, which represents every division in the state of North Carolina, and our governor, who is here with us today, who represents over 10 million people. That who supported the efforts of naming this bridge. In closing, kind of closing, I ask each one of y'all in attendance today, if not Mark Bass Knight, then who? If not Mark Bass Knight, then who? <laughs> to some, Mark was a politician. For those who have deep generational roots, he is part of our family. You can hear it in the names that I have mentioned from 64 and today. He is a leader who extended our community, providing the opportunity for many to move here, to become local to raise a family, and to live the Outer Banks way of life. No one, no one from Dare County in the last generation, in the present generation, or the generations to come, from Dare County will ever reach a level of success and service to the county, to the Northeast, or to our state as our native son. Thank you, Senator Bass Knight, if you're hearing these words, for your time, your talent, and your service. Okay. Our first speaker is Natalie Cavanaugh for the Bridge Moms. I'm sure you all know about the Bridge Moms. Their efforts were instrumental in gaining the needed attention and the urgent need to replace the Bonner Bridge. Their advocacy went all the way to the White House. So Natalie, come up here. Please. About 10 years ago, I was sitting in a crowded room waiting to give my public comment to NCDOT about replacing the Bonner Bridge. I was very nervous to speak in front of so many people, kind of like right now. And I thought no one would listen to my small voice. No one would hear what I was having to say. My friend, Commissioner Warren Judge, was there that night and I asked him for advice on how to get through it. He said, just speak from your heart and they will listen. 
Oh, how I wish he were here today to hear us speak about this bridge now. So, that night I took his advice. I spoke about my fears as a mother, riding over a bridge that had a safety rating of a two out of a hundred. How my rational mind knew that it was okay to drive on it, but my irrational mommy fears made the images run through my head of the bridge, breaking apart, the car sliding down, trying to get out and knowing that even if I managed to survive, I would never be able to release my toddler from his car seat. As many of you know, that is a challenge in the best of conditions. I spoke to our NCDOT representatives about how I feared the project would not move fast enough to get the new bridge built in time before the old one needed to be shut down for our safety. And while I spoke, my brilliant friend Beth Midget watched the faces of other mothers in the audience that night. She saw that they had the same worries, and in that moment, Bridge Moms was born. Her drive and dedication to this cause has been an inspiration. Our message would not have gotten very far without her hard work. The next day, she called me, my mom, Susie Perry, and several close friends together to share her ideas for Bridge Moms. We met with many other mothers over the following weeks, and together we made one small voice grow, become all of our voices, become focused, and become heard. We asked our moms to write letters telling how they felt about the bridge and how they responded. And those hundreds of letters made it to our local commissioners, to our state government officials, and to our federal representatives. Those letters became tools for them to use to break the project out of the gridlock that had been tracked in for so many years. I hope that every mother who wrote a letter feels ownership of that bridge every time they drive over it. That she feels her voice was heard because they did hear us, and not only that, they did something about it. As the challenges that face our coastal communities and highways continue, I hope that they will remember that it is these moms and their families that they still protect. So many people work to get this bridge built, both before and after us. They are able to solve problems and make decisions that were outside of our realm. And we are so thankful for all of them. To our government officials, to NCDOT, to PCL, we are so proud of this bridge. You have built us a bridge that will get us safely over it. You have built us a bridge that will get our watermen safely under it. You have built us a bridge that is as beautiful as the landscape that surrounds it and as strong as the people on both sides of it. And for that, we are truly grateful. Thank you, Madam. Our next speaker is Dave Hallett, Superintendent of the National Parks and the Eastern Division. We appreciate how Dave and the National Park Service have been tremendous partners during the building of this bridge and hosting events like this one. Dare County has a special working relationship with National Park Service because of Dave Hallett. He is a special superintendent, and I welcome you to speak. Thank you. When we did our Community Day celebration, Chairman Woodard talked about the fact that the Bonner Bridge was half paid for approximately by the National Park Service. And Malcolm just reminded me that he just took his uh, ethics course and that all of these are government property. So you'll need to leave these in the basket over in the corner when you leave. Thank you for that. I also, before I get started, I want to recognize Steve Thompson of our staff who's also wearing government property. He retired just a few days ago with a cowboy hat on, and Steve was instrumental in this project, and we thank him for everything that he did. I have the pleasure of working as the superintendent of Cape Hatteras National Seashore, Fort Raleigh National Historic Site, and Wright Brothers National Memorial. It's great to be here with you today. The accomplishments that we are honoring today symbolizes three very important things to me in the National Park Service. Unwavering dedication, friendship, and teamwork. This bridge represents the gateway to Hatteras Island, Ocracoke Island, most of Cape Hatteras National Seashore, and Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge. Folks, these are the jewels of Dare and Hyde Counties and the Department of Interior. It's a vital link for visitors. 
who come from all over the world and residents to visit their first national, national seashore, to travel, to work, and to be home with family. Last year, more than two million people traveled across Oregon Inlet to Pea Island and Cape Hatteras Seashore. I am sure those millions of people will not only enjoy the new view and smooth ride, but the reliability and safety that this engineering marvel provides to our society. The Mark Bass Knight Bridge will also benefit commercial fishermen, charter boat captains, recreational boaters, all of them who leave Cape Hatteras Seashore and go to work. They go to play and they adventure in the Atlantic Ocean. Unwavering dedication. Days before Hurricane Florence, Ferry Division Director Harold Thomas and Deputy Director Jed Dixon made hourly trips available to Ocracoke residents to go to Swan Quarter and Cedar Island throughout the night. They even provided extra trips for the residents to get off that island safely and escape the path of the storm. Their captains worked tirelessly, sacrificing their own time and supporting the public. Hours after the hurricane hit, Jerry Jennings' staff had already cleared much of old Isabel Inlet. I was down there with Chairman Woodard and Bobby Alton hours after the storm passed, and we were able to get between Frisco and Hatteras Village for one reason, because of the hardworking NCDOT Highway Division staff. They allow safe passage of vehicle within minutes of the storm passing. Weeks after Hurricane Florence passed, Jerry and his team had rebuilt more than a mile of dune on Ocracoke Island to provide safe passage along Highway 12. The North Carolina Department of Transportation, their staff, they are heroes. Over the last year, NCDOT has begun construction of a new bridge between Pea Island and Rodanthe to provide other sustainable transportation solutions. And this means friendship. Over the years, DOT has also done so much for us. They helped to pave our runways at Wright Brothers, at Billy Mitchell Airport, and on Okra Coat, allowing planes to come in from around the country. Governor Cooper, Secretary Trogdon, the Department of Transportation connects people, places, communities, and families, and I can tell you very confidently, they are the best friends that Cape Hatteras National Seashore has ever had, and their work is first class. Thank you. And finally, this bridge means teamwork. The team we have here are partners at Dare County, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the town of Nags Head and Kill Devil Hills, the state of North Carolina, the Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Office, and many others. We have something very special here. We work as a team to accomplish great things that are in the best interest of protecting our national treasures, our community, and our visitors. The National Park Service is proud to be part of this team. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to invite up to the podium now Rebecca Barton, the project leader for the Coastal North Carolina National Ref Refuge Systems. <laughs> the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is another key partner in the bridge replacement project. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I so appreciate the opportunity to be here today representing the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and celebrating the new bridge over Oregon Inlet, which leads anyone traversing this stretch of highway onto Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge. Pea Island Refuge was established in 1937, and the original opening of the Herbert C. Bonner Bridge over Oregon Inlet created new opportunities for people to access this unique wild place. The past 56 years have ushered in significant changes in visitation to our refuge. 
The Refuge's annual narrative report from 1963 cites 873,281 visitors to the Cape Hatteras complex, with 1,817 visitors to the Refuge's field station. The narrative states, and I quote, the Herbert C. Bonner Bridge over Oregon Inlet opened November 20th. This is reflected in a slight visitation increase and is expected to increase further as the public becomes aware that the bridge is open." End quote. I doubt the author of that narrative could ever have expected that in 2018, estimated visitation would surpass 2 million people, or that more than 35,000 people would visit our visitor contact station on Pea Island. The ability to more easily access Pea Island has resulted in visitors falling deeply in love with the refuge and what it has to offer. The refuge has earned its reputation as a national treasure on the North Carolina coast and a birder's paradise. Over the past five decades, the refuge has also experienced a significant change in its footprint. The shoreline marches ever westward, dunes shift disappear and rebuild. New inlets form and close. Refuge facilities have been lost to the Atlantic and the highway has moved. Cresting the new bridge offers a breathtaking vista of the refuge that serves as an apt reminder of the fragility and the resiliency of this ever-changing place. As I descended the bridge onto the refuge recently, I was immersed in the sense of the constant transformation, the delicate truce, and the borrowed blessing that is Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge. The new bridge and the coming years will bring new changes to this refuge. Some we may be able to predict, sea level rise, continued island transformation, increasing visitation, and some may not yet be evident. We will rise to meet these challenges as we have in the past, alongside our partners, and determine to protect this special place. Thank you to the merger team partners, to the North Carolina Department of Transportation, and to this amazing community for the work and the support that have resulted in this new bridge over Oregon Inlet. We look forward to seeing you out on the refuge. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Werber. He's the current chairman of the Dare County Board of Commissioners. He's a resident of Kill Devil Hills. Chairman Wooders has been a county commissioner since 2012 and is currently serving his 12th um, year as chairman. Bob started his political career as a Kill Devil Hills commissioner. Bob, past county chairmen have set a high standard of achievement. Bob, you continue those standards of excellence and achievement, and we welcome you as our chairman, Dear County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Malcolm Ferrin. He just just then whispered in my ear. I apologize for talking so long. I said, "Don't worry about it, Malcolm. You just shot in the winter for us." <laughs> Good afternoon, Dare. Are you excited? Yes. If you're excited, say new bridge. New bridge. Come on, you can do better than that. New bridge. New bridge. All right, Governor, as Matthew McConnick would say, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> what a great day. What a great day. Couldn't be any better. I'm going to ask a few folks to stand up, and please stay standing until I, until I ask you to sit down. I'd like to recognize our Board of Commissioners, Vice Chairman Wiley Overman, Commissioner Rob Wart Ross, Commissioner Steve House, Commissioner Danny Couch, where's Danny? There he is, Danny. Commissioner Herb Bateman. We also, stay standing guys, we also have with us former Vice Chair of the Dare County Board of Commission, John Robert Hooper, stand up brother. We also have Vice Chair Alan Burris. Alan is standing right back there. Right back there, He's, he loves hanging on to that tent. He likes to hear that rain beat on that tent back there. And then we have with us Warren Judge's wife, 
Test judge. Test the big guy, TC. That's between you and I. You and I know what TC stands for. The big guy's up there looking down on us today with a big smile on his face. Thank you all, all for being here. Thank you for what you do for Dare County. I've got two letters I'd like to read that was uh, presented to me this morning. One is from uh, U.S. Senator Tom Tillis. That thing's dropping right smack dab on my head. <laughs> Dated April the 2nd. Dear friends, I am pleased to welcome everyone gathered to celebrate the dedication of the new bridge over Oregon Inlet in honor of Senator Mark Bassnight. Senator Bass Knight's 27 years of representing the citizens of Northeast North Carolina clearly demonstrate his unwavering passion, tireless effort, and commitment to public service. While the Senate schedule prevents me from attending today's event, I would like to thank Senator Bass Knight for his leadership and lasting influence across our state. I wish you all the best for a wonderful celebration, and I extend my sincere congratulations to Senator Bass Knight on receiving this honor. It's signed by Tom Tillis, U.S. Senator. I just gave uh, Vicki just a few moments ago that original, and Vicki, I have another original right here now. When I finish, I'll give you this. And this is from um, Richard Burr, United States Senate. It's also dated today, April 2nd. Mr. Bob Woodard, Dare County Chair Commissioner. Dear friends, what a great day for Dare County and for all the Outer Banks. After many years of planning and hard work, you are celebrating the ribbon cutting for the new Mark Bass Knight Bridge across the Oregon Inlet. The new bridge will assume the travelers have a safe and sound method to make their way all the parts of out of banks. Having the new bridge is important for the lives of many who depend on it as the only way to connect to the mainland. There are many people who contributed a great deal so that this would finally come to a reality and that all deserve applause for their foresight and perseverance. I know that the bridge will be a welcome sight to all who call Northeast North Carolina home, as well as those who take advantage of this beautiful part of the state vacations. It is fitting that North Carolina Department of Transportation has decided to name the bridge in honor of former Senator Mark Bassnight. His years of service in the General Assembly made clear his dedication to our state. It is appropriate that there be a lasting legacy to his leadership. I look forward to being on at the Outer Bank soon and I can see the new bridge in person. In the meantime, I hope all of you enjoyed today's events and that you travel on the same, on the new Mark Bass Knight Bridge. Sincere, sincerely, Richard Burr, United States Senate. Vicki, here's the original. And that grandbaby's over there echoing, echoing every word I'm saying. <laughs> Prior to building the Bonner Bridge, Hatteras Island was only accessible through air and ferry. Ferries could carry a maximum of 2,000 people per day. The ferries cost the state a half a million dollars back then, Governor, to operate. They were very long lines waiting for the ferries for peak season. The Bonner Bridge, as uh, Superintendent Halleck said earlier, four, four million dollars, and, and the Park Service federal government paid 2.5 of that. The, <clears throat> the bridge also made it possible, Danny, to provide electric power to the island using transmission lines rather than generators. I know you can relate to that. The official ground bank breaking for construction of the new bridge was held just on March the 8th, 2016, we gathered right here on this, on the, not on the south side of the bridge, excuse me, to break ground on this long-awaited dream. The Bonner Bridge was built in 1963 as it reached its projected lifespan of 30 years in 1993. That was 26 years ago, Secretary. Lack of funding and other obstacles kept officials from building a new bridge. See, he didn't think I could had math going on. <laughs> I'm going to throw another one at him. Crews over the years have spent 
50 million dollars, 50 million dollars, folks, to repair and maintain the bridge. And then in 2011, the highway department was ready to construct a parallel bridge when environmental groups, our good friends, huh, challenged the project in court. Finally, the state of North Carolina and the group reached a settlement, 2.8 mile structure costing $252 million. It's expected to last 100 years. Now, Malcolm, I know you and I ain't gonna be around, brother. <laughs> but I can tell you what, that grandbaby sitting down there just might be around, and I hope she is. This is a great day for the people who live and work on the Outer Banks, as well as millions of visitors coming from north and south and west. I don't know about east but uh, they're coming. So folks, today we celebrate more than a ribbon cutting. Today we celebrate fulfillment of a dream. Isn't that right, Beth? For decades, those former commissioners that I introduced, and these commissioners sitting in front of you right here today, and people all over Hatteras Island, had that dream of a new bridge over Oregon Inlet. Along the way, our dream had many challenges, but we never gave up. This magnificent day could not have happened without support of the bridge moms, Natalie, Beth, who wrote letters and worked tirelessly to make this happen. The people on Hatteras Island, your friends, your, your people there, Danny, who rallied around this dream. Our watermen, who depend on Oregon and the, as their highway to work. Our tourism partners, who understand that access to the maj majesty of Hatteras Island is absolutely vital to the Dare County's economy. And to our current and former members, as I mentioned a minute ago, the Dare County Board of Commissioners, who had the courage to never give up their unwavering stand and support of this much needed bridge. And no, Secretary Trogdon, I certainly have not forgotten NCDOT. Not only have they been there through the years, but when we had that power shut down, you were right there with us every step of the way, Mr. Secretary. And I can't thank you for what you've done for Dare County. Thank you, NCDOT, for all you have done over the years. And Alan, thank you for your leadership for us and Dare on that transportation board. What's the purpose of a bridge? To link our communities together. That's what the Mark Bass Knight Bridge will do for our community. It will link Hatteras Island and all it has to offer to the rest of Dare County. I'm excited when I think about the future and the role that this bridge will have for our residents and our visitors and generations to come on behalf of this current Board of Commissioners and former Board of Commissioners. Thank you for being a part of this historic ribbon cutting event. Folks, today proves dreams can come true. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Woodard. Now it gives me great privilege to introduce Secretary Trogdon, or General Trogdon, he is both. He's the Secretary of the Transportation, uh, Department of Transportation. He was appointed in uh, January 2017 and has more than 30 years worth of experience with DOT projects in transportation. Secretary Trogdon was involved in this project his whole tenure. And he also knows the people well in Dare County 
And if it wasn't raining today, he'd be in a convertible as he was on Hatteras in a parade. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. I will be brief, uh, but I'll start by thanking everyone who has worked so hard and with such dedication on this project. And I know there's too many names to mention, but I just wanted to say if you worked on planning, design, construction, advocated, showed up at public meetings, shared your opinion, wrote letters, please raise your hand. Pretty much everyone here, yes. Uh, as you can see, it took a team effort, and I certainly agree with uh, Superintendent Halleck. Uh, the, the key, I believe, to success in working on this project for the last 15 years was certainly starting with the leadership from Senator Bass Knight, who I believe it was uh, May of 2004, who assigned me to work on it. I thought it was a four-week project. Uh, <laughs> I ended up being mistaken. Uh, but the leadership he provided, but truly it's the unity of this community. The unity of effort and the dedication, no matter what the challenge, that you would overcome, and that's why we have this bridge today, so thank you. Uh, the Bonner Bridge has transformed the quality of life for your communities when it was opened in 1963, and it has been your lifeline. So this new bridge will be a new lifeline that preserves the quality of life here for generations to come. A few facts you may not know about the new bridge. Uh, it took 100 engineers who worked on this project to, to do all the designs. If you take all the concrete piles that have been placed and put them end to end, it would stretch 16 miles from the beginning of this bridge all the way to Rodanthe. Um, and it is 3,000. 550 feet long, the highest level navigation span, and the third longest continuous segmental concrete box girder in North America. The Bonner Bridge has served the Outer Banks for 55 years. Uh, I can't tell you all the storms. I think it was mentioned 41 hurricanes. Uh, many other storms, lots of effort, 50 million just to keep it maintained. But what made it possible and one of the pleasures that I've had is working with this community, especially those leaders like Natalie and Beth Midget here in the audience from the Bridge Moms who brought only the unity of effort and the dedication but the passion to make sure we were all making a difference. So thanks for all your efforts. This new bridge will be named the Mark Bass Knight Bridge, who served our state, our Board of Transportation, and the NC Senate for many years. And so it would be an honor uh, to replace the Bonner Bridge and celebrate the new Mark Bass Knight Bridge over the Oregon Inlet. And so now it's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Governor Roy Cooper. Governor Cooper was born and raised in Nash County, where he attended public schools and work summers on the family farm and received an undergraduate and law degrees from UNC Chapel Hill. He has a firm understanding of transportation and how it opens doors for opportunity and economic development and as mentioned, the leader of our hometown strong program. And during our previous hurricanes, both Florence and Michael, he was certainly there leading our efforts and providing me all the resources that we needed as DOT to perform and respond timely and effectively. And he continues to lead our uh, state forward in all of our recovery efforts. I always like to add this in the right audience. When I was interviewing for this job, the governor asked me, in four years, what would you like to accomplish at DOT? I think he was looking for a list of projects. I made him laugh with my response. Uh, in four years, I'd like for the new state tree to be the orange barrel the new state flower to be the orange work zone sign, and the new state motto will be to build rather than to study. <laughs> I think the opening of this new bridge highlights the, those desires. So welcome, <laughs> Governor Cooper. Thank you very much. Right after he said that, I said, you're hired. <laughs> so 
Secretary Trogdon, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Chairman Woodard, thank you, and all the commissioners and former commissioners of Dare County, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Alan Moran and Malcolm Fearing and Chairman Mike Fox, Board of Transportation, other members of the Board of Transportation who are here, and former members, uh, Representatives Torbett and Hennig, thank you for being here. My friend Tess Judge, grateful for your husband Warren and for you, my friend Mayor Bobby Owens of Mandy O, and all of the Bass Knight family, along with my Governor's Eastern Office head, Mary Jo Alcoke, and friends of the Outer Banks and Mark Bass Knight. Let me just say, this is the perfect day for this. <laughs> the perfect day. Because it shows the resiliency and the determination of the people of the Outer Banks. Little rain, little wind doesn't hurt people out here. A nor'easter can take. A severed power line we can deal with. A hurricane, having to move a historic lighthouse. All of those things the people here do with determination and gusto. So this is the perfect day. Now, I grew up in eastern North Carolina, and as a young man, I, I practiced law in Rocky Mount for many years, and used to take a long time to get out here. But it, I did make one or two trips. But as I began my service in the state senate, I needed to meet a man by the name of Mark Bastnight. And I was a little concerned because I'd heard he didn't care for socks or lawyers. <laughs> and I wore them and I was one. <laughs> but Mark Bastite and I became great friends. The kind of friends that transcend politics or government. Many of you out here, even though you knew him in the historic way of his leadership of the state senate and this state for many years. You knew him as a friend and know him as a friend today. You know, I began to get to know Mark and we discovered our mutual caring for education. A man, Mark Bassnight, who didn't go to college became one of the greatest champions for our universities anybody ever was. He knew the value of good roads and good bridges to connect rural communities to prosperity. And he knew what everyday people needed. He would come through Nash County pretty fast, coming, coming back <laughs> from Raleigh out here, and he he would stop places randomly. And I would hear from people in my Senate district where he had just stopped at the store and bought a Coke and a pack of nabs and asked people what they were thinking. Or he stopped and at a farmer's uh, field in my district and asked about the sweet potatoes. And he would come and tell me about what my constituents were saying. And he did that for other members of the Senate. And I know that we are here today to name this bridge after Mark Bastnight, but let me tell you, he really doesn't care about that. Because a lot of people who get into politics begin to care about it for the power that you have for power's sake. He never cared about the power for power's sake. And in fact, one of the reasons he was such a successful leader in the legislature is he let everybody in the legislature shine and do their thing for their people and their district. And what he cared about was getting things done. Making sure that there was a good road out here to the Outer Banks so that tens of thousands of people would be able to come out here and cross this bridge and walk the beaches at Pea Island or fish in the surf at Salvo. Things that people otherwise wouldn't get a chance to do but for the work that he and many others did to make the visitation of this place a reality. He helped to mold the Outer Banks not only for the tourists, which are so important to our state, and let me, let me tell you, 
you are critically important to the economy of North Carolina. And I'm very proud when I go across this country as governor of this great state to talk about the pearl that is the Outer Banks. But he cared deeply, and still does, about the people who live here, who grew up here, who had to navigate these waters before there were bridges, who had to try to communicate with each other at a time when we don't have the modern conveniences today. To this very day, he's still giving me advice. You know that thing that he, you talked about a four-week project for this bridge? I'm sure Burt Bass Knight thought it was going to be a four-week project and expected it to be that way. He was the demanding leader. But I'm grateful that I am here today with all of you for this great celebration. Because not only is this bridge going to respect the boaters and the fishermen with the way that it is constructed, but it is going to connect people together. My CEO mission statement for North Carolina is this. I want a North Carolina where people are better educated, where they're healthier, where they have more money in their pockets, and they have opportunities to live lives of abundance and purpose. That's what I want. The third grade class I told that to several months ago really liked the more money in your pockets part of the mission <laughs> statement. But you know, we want a state that is more prosperous. This bridge is going to help with that ideal. I'm grateful for my friend Mark Bass Knight, for his family. He would talk about uh, his, the love of his life, Sandy, and you, Vicki, and Caroline, when he was in Raleigh. And he's so grateful for his family. And I think he considers this entire community his, this, his family to this very day. I'm grateful for all of you. Let's dedicate this bridge. Let's go have fun on the Outer Banks. And let's make this a North Carolina that works for everyone. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Governor Cooper. Before we leave, we're coming to the end of the uh, event. Uh, a group of people that have not been recognized, and I apologize for that. As Mark Bastite did great work, he had a staff that helped him with that work. And I know there's several members of that staff here today. Norma, I see you in the back. Raw. Who, who, who here was a member of Mark's staff? Could you please raise your hands? Okay. They're the ones who did the work. Please. this podium without putting a plug in for two more projects. <laughs> <laughs> for my friends here from Terrell County, the Alligator River Bridge Project. <laughs> and for my friends here from Curry Tuck, the Mid Curry Tuck Bridge. <laughs> if I can, I'll ask Pastor Matt to provide the benediction. Receive this benediction. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold each and every one of us in the palm of God's hand. And may all who come to this beautiful place travel safely upon these beautiful roads and byways that we have. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.